Dobre večer. Tutaj William. Vitajte na sotogodnjovem potsumovanju polskik i irlandskik vidimosti zemna. William and Murphy. The main headlines this week have included The political crisis over the holding of the presidential election deepens as the Senate rejects the necessary legislation, making delay inevitable. Minister Michał Dvorak warns of the possibility of a snap general election if the same doesn't green light the vote. The Immigrant Council of Ireland calls for measures to increase the very low level of migrant participation in Irish politics. And Anna and Robert Lewandowski announced the birth of their second baby daughter. While the situation remained fluid at the time of preparation of this update, it looked virtually certain that the Polish presidential election wouldn't go ahead this Sunday, May 10th, by all postal ballot, with even Prabo Isprawili Vosht accepting they'd run out of time. The breakup of the ruling coalition remained a live possibility, with the prospect of fresh parliamentary elections being mentioned. There has even been speculation that President Duda could resign, enabling the vote to be delayed until mid-July. It followed the rejection on Tuesday on a 50-35 vote with one abstention by the opposition-controlled Senate of the legislation to enable the vote to proceed, which had been passed by the same last month. The government will now attempt to overturn the rejection with a fresh vote in the same, but the ruling bloc cannot rely on the support of one of Pravo Isprawili-Vosch's two smaller coalition partners, Porozumenia, who have vigorously objected to the vote going ahead, citing public health grounds. On Monday, Deputy Prime Minister Jadzeg Sashin said that May 10th is difficult and that Pravo Isprawili Vosht will consider holding the first round on May 17th or 23rd, a delay which will be permissible under the Constitution. Cabinet Minister Michał Dvorak said the election may not take place on schedule due to what he termed political tension. On Wednesday, Dvorak went further and warned that Parliament may have to be dissolved and a snap election held unless the impasse over the presidential vote can be resolved. He told Public Radio, We hope that there will be enough lawmakers who will adopt the draft bill. However, one also has to consider scenarios in which the bill is not passed, and then we will have to deal with a very serious political crisis. The head of the National Electoral Commission, Sylvester Marcinak, said in a statement on Tuesday that the presidential election could not now be held on May 10th for legal and organisational reasons. Same Speaker, Elzbiette Vitak, said she would ask the Constitutional Tribunal if postponing the election would be constitutional. Pravo Isprawili Vosht had earlier hinted that a delay of a week or two is possible. Incumbent President Andrzej Duda had delivered a major re-election campaign speech on Friday, in which he outlined his vision for a second term. Meanwhile, in what will no doubt have come as a relief to the government, the end of April marked the end of the six-year term of office of controversial Chief Justice Margaret Arthur Gerstorf, who has openly and publicly clashed with the government over judicial reforms. President Duda has appointed Judge Kamil Zaradkevich as her temporary replacement, as First President of the Supreme Court. Last Sunday, May 3rd was Constitution Day in Poland a day which is marked with a public holiday, to celebrate the constitution adopted by legislators on May 3rd, 1791. The document is often referred to as the first modern constitution in Europe, and just the second in the world, after the 1787 US constitution. Just four years later, in 1795, Poland lost its sovereignty for 123 years. The day is traditionally marked by a major address by the Polish president, which, in the unique circumstances this year, was broadcast to the nation rather than being delivered at Castle Square in central Warszawa. The Labour Ministry has estimated that unemployment in Poland rose to 5.7% in April due to the COVID-19 outbreak. On Wednesday, Minister Marlena Marlang told Polish Radio that the number of unemployed had increased by 58,000 last month to 960,000. She said that the government is doing everything to ensure that as few jobs as possible are lost due to the current crisis. Deputy Prime Minister Jagwiga Emelewicz said last month that the numbers unemployed could reach 1.5 million by the end of the year, 
with a jobless rate of somewhere around 9 or 10 percent. The Immigrant Council of Ireland this week published a new report which has highlighted the need for further measures to broaden the participation of migrants in the political process. The report entitled Strength in Diversity is based on the experience of migrant candidates in the 2019 local elections in which just 56 out of over 1,900 candidates were from a migrant background with only 9 being elected to one of the 949 local authority seats. The report found that political parties need to do more to integrate migrants into politics. On a positive note, it found that while migrants' participation in politics is very low, those candidates who did contest the election viewed it as a positive experience. The Immigrant Council said that the political parties need to make greater efforts to diversify their membership, support migrant candidates and tackle racism if our political representation is to match our diverse society. It said that, for a functioning and effective democracy, it is essential we bring migrants in from the margins and open up opportunities for them to be involved in political decision making. Last Saturday, May 2nd, was of course Poland's Flag Day, a day where citizens are encouraged to show their patriotism by hanging out the national colours of red and white. It was also the day of Poles abroad, and marking the occasion, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jacek Czatopowicz, extended his best wishes to Polish citizens living abroad. Czatopowicz said that, on this day, Poles across the country joined their thoughts in a special way with those who, while being part of the Polish nation, have found their new home abroad. Adding that, I would like to express my great respect and thanks to all those who, despite difficulties and the distance, have not abandoned contact with their homeland and have not forgotten the tongue of their forefathers, transmitting Polishness to subsequent generations. Czetopowicz especially praised the work of Polish doctors and nurses, working with enormous dedication in hospitals across the world. The minister said that, we see a direct relation between the achievements and position of Poles in individual countries and the success and prestige of Poland on the international arena. Finally, on Wednesday, Polish soccer star Robert Lewandowski announced the birth of a baby daughter, saying in an Instagram post, Hello, little one. Welcome to the world, Laura. He added, Well done, mummy. Anna Lewandowska. Anna and Robert Lewandowski already have one baby daughter, Clara, born in May 2017. Tovshescu na Chinchijin, the Brands.